just gotta love that American muscle sound and feel, and you 100% get that with this 2020 Dodge Challenger RT Scat Pack wide body. Today we're gonna take a full look at everything on the exterior details, take a look under the hood, take this thing for a test drive and check everything out. So starting out right under the hood, powering this RT Scat Pack is the 392 Hemi. It's a 6.4 liter V8 with 485 horsepower, 475 pound-feet of torque. And of course, you can get a six-speed manual with the Challenger. It's a Tremec six-speed, but we have the optional $1,600 eight-speed automatic transmission that includes paddle shifters, which we'll go through in the test drive. This is rear-wheel drive, and zero to 60 isn't quite as fast as you might expect. Low four-second range, but it's still very fun. And if you're curious, miles per gallon, 15 city, 24 highway, and 18 combined. Now, like I said, this is the RT Scat Pack wide body. So we've got a little bit of different treatment with the body style here. Just look at the aggressive design of the Challenger. I love how they've retained its big muscle car look. Right up front, you're gonna get amber LED daytime running lights and turn signals paired with these HID headlights. And they have a really sweet design to them. I love these circles and the interior of the lights. There's no fog lights with the wide body, but you still get this big, bold front end with the grill badging. Our model gets the performance hood with the single scoop and heat extractors on the sides. You'll get dual scoops on the top models. And our wide body gives us 20 inch rims. Standard, you'll get devil's rim wheels, but we have the optional Hellcat wheels that are carbon black with 305, 35 performance tires. So these tires are fat and wide and give you excellent traction. Plus to slow this baby down, you've got Brembo six piston front and four piston rear brakes. Those brakes are also slotted and vented, and we'll talk about that in the test drive. And this particular model gives us the tour red paint. It's got the traditional muscle car look, bold red paint, the wide body fender flares to give us a wider look, the wide body competition suspension, and even SRT tuned Bilstein adaptive suspension with three different modes. Dimensionally, it's 198 inches long. So this is a big car and much longer than the Camaro and the Mustang, plus, this wide aggressive stance really helps this car stand out. And you have the optional SRT performance spoiler in the back, massive black spoiler, split LED signature tail lamps, similar to the front end design and these fat dual exhaust tips. Now, not to throw any shade at the Camaro or the Mustang, but their trunks are tiny. They're smaller cars. The Challenger is quite a bit bigger and its trunk shows. So you got a little button right there that you can push with your smart key to open it up. And then you get over 16 cubic feet back here, which is actually bigger than most sedans in any class. So it's a very impressive size trunk. And it's even got a tire repair kit, although you don't get a spare tire on our particular trim. That is optional on lower trims. As we hop into the front seats of this Challenger, the Plus package gives us all Cantara seats. They're also heated and ventilated with some massive bolsters around your body. I will say they are not the most comfortable seats, but they fit this car really well. They still help keep you in your seat. The bolstering is nice. They're a little bit on the stiff side, but that's just what you get with this type of car. Just on long trips, I haven't been quite as comfortable as some softer seats, but they are 10-way power adjustable, including four-way lumbar support, which is welcome. The one weird thing is that the reclining function is actually uh, manual, but maybe that's just for, the, uh, just for the fact of letting people into the back seat, but still, not too bad, and I really love the actual bolstering on here. The Alcantara feels nice, and overall, I think you'll be happy with these seats. We also have the optional heated steering wheel, which is power, tilt, and telescoping. So it's also got a nice range of motion. Now taking a quick look at the rest of the interior, the Plus package also gives us premium stitched dash and door panels, and it has the classic look and a simplified interior. Now to start off on the door, you can see that nice material running on the entire upper door panel, the entire area around your elbow, and the armrest is soft. The windows are automatic down, but not automatic up, but you still have a nice bottle holder that works well and a little cubby back there. We have push button start. Nice startup. We actually get Dodge's performance flat bottom wheel. It's leather wrapped, it's heated, it is comfortable to hold on to. I like the bolstering over here, a little bit of perforation here, and the somewhat flat bottom on there as well. You have audio controls on the back of each side, all the controls you need here, and even the paddle shifters that we'll go through in the test drive. Dodge gives you a couple physical gauges, almost kind of retro classic style, which is pretty cool, plus the digital display in the middle. That display in the middle has a lot of different information that you can see. Check this out. You can even see the torque, the power, 
all sorts of different vehicle information and this is all usable on the steering wheel. You have performance pages, which is pretty cool. I'm not gonna go into detail with this because this has been around for a while, but uh, fuel economy, you got a couple different trip computers as well. You can see your audio messages. You can customize your screen. So up there you can see some of that stitching on the dash is what they call the premium dash and door. Just gives a nicer material, a nicer feel in this vehicle. And then standard, we've got our 8.4 inch Uconnect system, but we have the optional navigation and optional 18 speaker 900 watt Harman Kardon audio system, which really sounds nice. This system is very bassy. It's one of the bassiest stock systems I've seen. You can have surround sound on here as well, the green edge. Uh, it's just a really nice system. The uh, actual touch function of this is fairly responsive. It's certainly not the best, but there's a lot that you can do on here. This is also where you have your seat controls for heating, ventilating, uh, even your steering wheel. I prefer physical buttons, but at least down here, you actually get a volume and a tuning knob. And then check this out. You can quickly go through your drive modes. So you press that, and then you got more performance pages that show up on the screen. And you can access this through the actual screen too, but track mode, sport mode, custom. Track is the stiffest all the way around. I like how with custom, you can customize how you want each aspect of the car to respond to you. So that's pretty cool. Even a shift light, which I never really use, but it'll tell you when to shift depending on which RPM you want. Um, check out more performance pages here. It just makes it fun. It makes it feel like you're actually in a race car. There's a lot of different things you can do. You have timers, you can see your G-forces, different gauges. It's just, it's just a fun thing that you don't always see in cars. This also has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And then again, as we come down, we've got rear parking sensors. You can automatically just turn your screen off with that. Launch control right here where you hold the brake and then you just floor it basically. So that's cool that you just have a quick button for launch control. Dual zone climate control is actually standard. So that is nice, you've still got simple functions down here. Next to the center console, on each side you get a little net for an extra little knickknack storage. I like this shifter, of course this is our automatic. You do have leather, it's a solid feeling shifter and you still have a manual mode. Let's go ahead and put it in reverse. So we don't have a 360 camera or anything on, on here but you get dynamic lines. And then next to the shifter, there's a little storage area and then we have illuminated cup holders that actually have a little illumination ring at night on every single trim. But these are really small. I've kind of had to keep my bottle in the door. I can wedge it in there, but it is really tight. The center armrest is nice. You have more stitching on here. It's softly padded as well. Lift it up and it's actually pretty good size. You've got a couple of extra charging ports, 12 volt outlet, auxiliary port, and it's not too bad. Dodge also gives you a locking glove box, two-tiered with a light. And then up above, you get just regular incandescent lights, garage opener, and an automatic dimming rear view mirror, which is actually standard. Plus, there's a little sunglass holder up there as well. And if you're curious about visibility, this, these front windows obviously are massive, but once you start looking out the back, you've got that big body, the big pillar. So it's not the best, of course. I think it's still better than the Camaro, but we have blind spot indicators in our mirror, which are optional. And then up above, we don't have the sunroof, but it is optional on every trim. To my surprise, it is actually not that bad in here. Once again, it is more spacious in terms of legroom and headroom than a Mustang and a Camaro. I can actually sit up and my head does touch, but anybody shorter than me at 5'9 should probably be able to fit in here, okay? And I put this seat where I could sit and be okay, not my preferred position, but sit here without my knees touching. I cannot sit behind where I normally sit, but at least you could get some children back here or some smaller adults too, so way to go and to top it off you still have a soft armrest you got a fold down armrest with cup holders and you even have air conditioning vents and if you really don't need your back seat you can fold down a 60 40 split these seats to get bigger stuff in your trunk all right y'all let's get going on the test drive definitely love that startup all right so this is my very first time well i've been driving this for about a week but this is my very first time actually getting to drive a challenger and for that matter any of these dodge you know sports muscle cars high-powered cars i drove a durango a couple years ago as a rental but um this is i've definitely enjoyed this this feels large and in charge you can definitely tell you got a big muscle car you got that big hood just a brawny brawny experience driving this car 
now I do have some uh, binaural audio recording this, so be sure to stick your headphones in for the best results of the audio. We're just in auto mode right now. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. Even just coasting along in here, this V8, the 6.4 liter V8, this is a big engine. And when you get on it even a little bit, just partial throttle, you've got some good feedback. I mean, you get some torque fairly early, considering this is a naturally aspirated engine. Um, it's not gonna feel like a turbo where you get an instant boost, but I love the way that this feels. I think this big naturally aspirated engine, this V8 is exactly what you want. Sounds fantastic. And like I said, we are in auto mode. You can even customize things on there. I showed you a little bit of that screen, but you can basically customize every aspect that you want. The steering wheel, uh, the way the transmission responds, the suspension. So you can kind of make it tailored to whatever you like. And you can go between sport, track, auto. Now, one of the downfalls to this car, to the Challenger, as opposed to a couple of the other domestics like the Camaro and the Mustang, is that the steering, the handling just isn't quite on par with those. Those are a little bit more sports cars, whereas this has kind of kept its tradition as a muscle car in a way. This is a bigger car as well. That's not to say this is a terrible handler. It's a little bit slushy, you know, from what you might expect, but it, it's just fine. It's perfect for daily driving. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put it in sport mode. That'll automatically turn off your electronic stability control. It's gonna hold your RPMs a little bit higher. And then as I let off, it's holding those RPMs. Sounds great. It really does sound nice. I haven't touched the brakes at all. I haven't used the paddles. It's just, it's perfect. But when you do need to use his brakes, you've got some really good sized Brembo brakes, six piston front, four piston back uh, with our wide body here. But we'll get on it here in just a sec. Sounds great, pedal down. V8 you get in this lineup. I'm sure you're gonna have some fun. I know the V6 is not as powerful as some But you can still have a little bit of fun with that and you can get this muscle car nature it Just sounds great you've got that deep roar in here I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and use the paddles or the manual shifting here of this car going around corners and I wasn't pushing it I wasn't doing track stuff but that's that's the biggest downfall now if you want some features like adaptive cruise control you can get it but um, this one doesn't come with it at this price point but you can get that um, but in daily driving this this interior it's it's all right you know it's not the most up-to-date not the most modern but it works in terms of noise it's actually aside from the powertrain noise which is fantastic it actually is fairly quiet when you're cruising along on the interstate, high speeds, it's really not that bad. And I think it's quieter than the Mustang and Camaro, if I remember correctly. But just daily driving, this is fun. And you still have more space in the trunk, more space in the, uh, in the back seat for headroom and legroom than a Mustang and a Camaro. It's just a, it's kind of a big car to drive around, uh, but you just get this, this fun factor with it. It 
it's like a brotherhood driving driving these Mopars. I mean, you, once you get behind the wheel and you drive this and you talk to some other people with these, you will understand. And I hope y'all enjoyed this test drive. I definitely enjoy this Challenger. It's very fun. I hope you can kind of get a sense of that and, and just understand what I'm talking about and how fun this car is. And even though it's not the most up-to-date, it's not the fastest, it's just fun. And that's what matters. I do have a longer test drive of this if you want to see that where you can get more of the sound, a little bit more acceleration, uh, all of that. But thank you all so much for watching. Let's go ahead and wrap things up. So to wrap things up on this 2020 Challenger RT Scat Pack wide body, you've got to love the sound and the feel that you get with this modern day muscle car. As opposed to the Camaro and the Mustang that are smaller and a little bit more sports car oriented, you still get the big beefy body and that huge V8 in this car gives you a really nice muscle car feel. Unlike that tiny little four cylinder you just heard over there. Now one thing that I've noticed about driving this Challenger is that it's like a brotherhood driving these Mopars. Everybody else that has one of these is going to wave at you. The Mustangs are going to rev at you. It's just the way that it's been. I hope y'all have enjoyed this review. I really like all the ways that you can dress this up, the different powertrain levels, and they still really give you quite a bit of options even on those lower V6 trims. But if you want to go crazy, you can go up to the Hellcat, the Red Eye, whatever you want. But this RT Scat Pack wide body is a perfect blend of everything you want in a muscle car. Thank y'all so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more reviews. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Tap the thumbs down button twice if you didn't. Have a great rest of your day.